Hey guys, me, Reynolds, Chris Tomer here with this Wednesday afternoon, evening mountain weather update. My first stop is to one of my bullseyes in my forecast. This is Lassen Peak up there on the volcano and the live camera. I mean, the snow has just been coming down. Lassen is uh, one of my bullseyes along with Mount Shasta. It's right in line with the fire hose, um, the atmospheric river. That's where it's just going to be blasting that area for quite some time. So that's Lassen. Let me show you radar out of the Pacific Northwest. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at parts of Northern California, just copious amounts of precip underneath the jet, underneath this fire hose of just atmospheric river moisture. So that continues. Let me take you a little bit closer. I mean, that is some heavy precipitation, um, significant rain for lower elevations, and of course, snow at higher elevations. And notice Lake Tahoe. You can actually see the lake there. It's right on the periphery. Everything heavy is just to the north of Lake Tahoe. You'll eventually get in on the action, but it's going to take some time. It's not, I'm only forecasting light snow tonight, tomorrow. You're going to have to wait on it in Tahoe, and you're going to have to wait on it in Mammoth as well. All right, here's the setup on water vapor satellite imagery. So there is our bomb cyclone. It's still spinning, hasn't moved much. And look at the fetch of moisture coming off of the, uh, the Pacific, just shooting straight into Northern California, right in there. Um, so that's our atmospheric river component, and that will continue through late on the 22nd into the 23rd, as it looks right now. In fact, here's the latest forecast for integrated vapor transport, and it continues all the way into the 22nd and starts to tail off the atmospheric river, tails off by the 23rd. Um, and we're looking at a moderate intensity atmospheric river uh, right on the entry level strong. So we've still got 48 hours plus of this type of feed yet to go, this atmospheric river flow. All right, here are my latest bullet points for this afternoon evening. We've got the moderate intensity atmospheric river, um, not only tonight, but tomorrow and on the 22nd and maybe even into early on the 23rd. And believe it or not, between now and the 29th, there are a total of four to five different storm systems to come and carry this moisture and slam into the Sierra the high volcanoes and the Cascades, and these storm systems even beyond 23 will carry the moisture and they'll be overrun with significant snow in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. My numbers in Utah and the Wasatch have gone up. And in Western Colorado, in the central and northern mountains of Western Colorado, we're talking some pretty good totals. So there are my two bullseyes, Lassen and Shasta. I think Lassen could get 100 inches or more as a grand total out of this. I mean, the amount of moisture that we're going to crank out over the top of the top of uh, Lassen, the volcano, is unbelievable. Um, I mean, if you really look at it objectively, 100 inches, that should be fairly easy to crank out over Lassen. And then, of course, overrun snow for the interior. Here are my latest, uh, here's my latest snow timeline, best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Teton, Colorado, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and Interior, BC. I won't go through all these. I'll just detail Tahoe. Um, so again, just light snow accumulation for tonight and tomorrow. Your heavy accumulation for Tahoe down to Mammoth really doesn't come in until the afternoon of 1122 through 1123. Another shot of heavy accumulation on 1125, and then another shot of heavy on 1126. Um, so it, like I said, four to five different storm systems coming in here and really helping to, uh, keep this heavy snow going. All right, let's talk about the forecast radar and satellite. So there it is by 5:30 this afternoon, you can see the big storm system hitting the West coast. And then by the time we move into tomorrow morning, look at the snow. So it's right there at Tahoe North. It's, it's right on the periphery. Like I was saying, you're going to have to wait but that, head, that fire hose continues to blow across northern California. Then by the time we get into 1122, watch what happens. Next storm system comes in and everything begins to move a little bit further to the south. So Tahoe's in it. And then eventually all the way down to Mammoth by 1123 in the morning. And look at the blow off, the overrun precip through Idaho and northwest Montana and parts of BC benefiting from this pattern. All right, there's 1124, and look at the diagonal of snow on the jet. Now cruising through parts of Nevada, lining up for the Wasatch, the High Uintas, and parts of the central and northern mountains of Colorado. And that's 1124 in the morning. 
That snow plume continues in Colorado on 1124 in the afternoon. Next storm system hits California, flush with heavy snow again for a lot of the Sierra. That storm system moves into the interior with heavy snow for the Wasatch, Idaho, and potentially the Tetons and also Colorado. Um, and there it is, continuing 1126. Next storm system. You can see how they're just lined up like a parade of storm systems. This one hits California at 1126 in the afternoon, and that one moves into the interior with heavy snow for a lot of Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado. Look at that in Colorado. And another storm system hits the Pacific Northwest on 1128 and 1129, and it also moves in to the interior. All right, here's how much snow I'm expecting in this update. So the rest of today through tomorrow, potentially a couple of feet over the top of Shasta, and also Lassen, and again, just light accumulations over the top of Tahoe. You're really on the periphery. We're going to have to wait, but potentially eight up there around Sun Valley, and Sun Valley is going to do really well. Here's my extended numbers. So this is 1122 through 1129. Look at Sun Valley. You could pick up two over two feet of snow, and Brundage is there too, but over two feet of snow for Sun Valley in line with that targeting. Um, and look at the Sierra, uh, potentially three to four feet from Mammoth to Tahoe up to Shasta. That's on top of uh, what Shasta got in the first period. Um, and then look at parts of the, the Wasatch. I upped those numbers, looking at potentially a couple of feet, if all this lines up, uh, potentially one to two feet for the Tetons. In Colorado, the central to northern mountains could be looking at one to two feet of accumulation if all goes as planned, less accumulation in the southern mountains. But looking pretty good, anywhere in purple is a foot or more. Um, and I talked about Idaho, the Pacific Northwest, one to two feet, interior BC, benefiting from all of this moisture and this blow off anywhere from 10 to 20 inches of accumulation. Back to the first period again, this is the rest of today through tomorrow. A lot of it is sort of on the diagonal through the Pacific Northwest and parts of Northern California, and then it spreads. This is the effect of four to five different storm systems carrying the moisture off the Pacific, across the Sierra, and into the Intermountain West. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a good night.